haven't seen Carson now the last two years. He was injured for the playoffs with a knee and a back, uh, back respectively, and then gets knocked down the first few plays with a concussion. What does this say about Wentz as a franchise quarterback? Not a damn thing. Uh, this has nothing to do with it. If it were a different kind of injury, that would be different. Nobody is immune from potential concussions, particularly on a play like that. I am not calling Jadavion Clowney a dirty player. I want to be very, very clear about that. But I'll be damned if that wasn't a dirty play. That was a dirty play. I mean, when you see this guy, now you could, and I don't understand how the officials didn't flag uh, Jadavion Clowney. I thought he should have been ejected from the game. Yeah, that's targeting. You know what? His head, if you look at his body, his head, he, that is targeting his head. The man is sliding, and that's what you did. You hit him in the back of the head and smashed his head. And I got this, listen, I got this right here from an Eagles source, a source that works for the Eagles organization. This is minutes. This is like literally a quarter after this happened. This is during the game. Carson's concussion is really bad. He can't remember anything that happened. Oh. When he went into the medical tent, he was literally swaying. I got that from an Eagles yeah. source, okay? Yeah. There is no way on earth that Davion Clowney should not have been ejected from that game. As far as I'm concerned, there should be a stiff fine coming his way. Suspension. Again, I'm not calling – or suspension. I'm not calling him a dirty player. I've never seen him do anything before. But that play yesterday, Max, was what it was. It was a dirty play. And I played in this league for 11 years. I played on some of the, the best defenses and the nastiest defenses. We know the easy button spots in which you get players up out of there. He targeted him in the back of the head. It's hard to hit a target that's almost on the ground with the crown of your helmet if you're not trying to do it intentionally. If that would have been Vontez Burflick, we'd have been calling for him to be kicked out of the league again. Right, it, it, you, you just because you don't have a history it of it doesn't Slow mean that it's. I'm not calling him a dirty I agree player. With that. Yeah. This is 100 percent a right dirty there. play. Crown yep. of the helm. It right is there. hard. Yep. Wow. We're taught as defenders to hit what you see. This is what the rule is there for. Right. For this play. And he hit him in the back of the helmet, and then, and then it got intensified when the front of his helmet hit. You know, Carson Wentz, I think, is a great quarterback. He's a quarterback that's proven that he can win. You can win with. You know, sometimes you get in the league and just fluke things happen to you. You're trying to do too much. But that is out of his control. It's one thing to have a ligament, uh, a, a bone, a joint. You can say he's got salt. He needs to drink milk. Mm -hmm. But to talk about his head because somebody hit him in the back of the head or fouled him. We got the Eagles. We got the Sixers. Philly talk. What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, and this is Philly talk. For those who are new to the channel, love talking Eagles football or Sixers basketball, go right ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you never want to miss another one of these videos, click that little bell by the subscribe button for post notifications. Now, if you've been rocking with me for a minute, old subscriber, new subscriber, and you want to help this channel grow, smash that like button. It lets YouTube know that we're out here doing things and it lets them know to push this content to other Philly fans to grow this community. So with that being said, like this video if you like this content and want to help it grow. Let's jump right into it. Before I get into any offseason talk, I want to touch on a few parts about last night's game. Starting with that dirty hit. At least the media is agreeing with Eagle fans. Everybody's coming out and saying it was dirty. Because it was dirty. When you see something dirty, you got to call it dirty. It was the definition of a cheap shot. Even a guy like Skip Bayless, who hates the Eagles, and Carson Wentz, agrees it was a cheap shot. We have people today questioning Carson Wentz's durability, saying that whole injury-prone narrative. If he hurt a ligament, a bone, his shoulder, his leg, then I would hear your case out. But no, he didn't. He was hit illegally with a cheap shot. A cheap shot means it was not supposed to happen. You're not allowed to do that. How could you count that? How? Brett Favre, Iron Man, Eli Manning never missed a game. If they would have got hit how he got hit, they would have been concussed. Simple and plain. 290 pound guy spearing his head, his helmet, to the back of your helmet, six inches off the turf. So it's a bang, bang, a double whammy. The back of his helmet, too. See, I've seen guys get concussed, dropping back in the pocket, helmet to helmet, straight on. They don't even fall on each other, and they get concussed. Now, Carson Wentz gets that done, which happened to him before. He's walking up, brushing that off. 
And he played five snaps after this. Until someone on the sidelines noticed it, called it up, and once you get checked in for protocol, if you don't pass, you can't play. This is how the NFL is. This is why they're trying to prevent these hits. Two billion dollar lawsuit for the concussion thing. That movie they made and everything. My mom told me if I play on the sidewalk or far away from the street, I can't get hit by a car. He fell down on the ground, was touched, and the guy lately blindsided, ran him in the head. If I play on the sidewalk, follow all these rules, and a car flies on the sidewalk and hit me, well, guess what? There's, it's out of my control. I followed all the rules. I wasn't in the street. I was far away from the street as possible, and I got hit by a car. That's what happened last night. Carson Wentz gets tackled down. He's giving himself up. The guy in front of Javon Clowney, his own teammate, is coming into the scene with two hands to touch Carson down. And Javon's like, I don't care. Bang! 30. <laughs> Just 30. There was nothing Carson Wentz could do to prevent that from happening. It was a cheap shot. If he gets tackled by a by a legal tackle and gets hurt, it's a different story. This was illegal. Should have never happened. <sighs> Still pissed off about that. At the end of the day, this loss was frustrating because it was a winnable game. Josh McCown could have won the game, but he didn't. But I want to give props to people like Zach Ertz playing through that injury. Miles Sanders, who got hurt at halftime and still played. And today was seen on crutches with an MCL. It's not surgery needed, but that's the toughness of a guy like Zach Ertz, Miles Sanders. Josh McCown left it all out on the field. For 40 years old, I can't fault for him for anything that happened in this game. He tried his best. He cried after the game. He gave it his all. He was limping and kept playing. Fourth down, you want him to throw the ball, but at the end of the day... You can't really fault him. He did everything in his power. If he was 10 years younger, he might have slipped through that hole and got the first down. But I do want to talk about Doug Peterson's play calling. From 20 to 20, he was good. He was moving the ball. He was getting his tight ends involved, other people involved. But when he got inside the 20 or inside the 30, he got too predictable, too safe, too vanilla. You can't do that. Five times inside the 30, three times inside the 20, zero touchdowns. When the Philadelphia Eagles are third in the NFL in red zone touchdowns, Carson Wentz is 19 touchdowns and zero interceptions inside the 20. And that's the difference. McCown played a good game, but inside the 20, we got too predictable. With Carson Wentz, he converts some of them into touchdowns. Carson Wentz, when inside of 20, is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. 19 touchdowns, zero interceptions. And as a team, third in the NFL in red zone touchdowns. It's as simple as that. I want to give Russell Wilson and them guys props. Russell Wilson, when needed to make a throw, he did what he needed to do. And I respect Russell Wilson. After the game, he went up to Doug Peterson and he asked, how is Carson Wentz doing? He knows his boy did something dirty. And that's why he went straight to Doug Peterson and asked, is Carson Wentz okay? That's a class act from a guy like Russell Wilson. And that's why I can respect the Seattle Seahawks team. Just not what Javon Clowney did. It was unacceptable. The game's over. I'm just glad Carson Wentz is going to be okay. I heard he was really shooken up by it, what Stephen A said. At the end of the day, this is what we're trying to eliminate from the game. Derek Barnett on third down, a crucial third down, got a rough in the passer. A actual regular football rough in the passer. Russell Wilson threw the ball. He tackled him late. Was it a flag? Yes. By the rough in the passer rules, the ball was out of his hand. He didn't need to hit him, but at least he did a football hit. He didn't do something crazy. At the end of the day, that has to get rid of the that has to get out of the game. That has to get out of the game. I understand if you accidentally smack a quarterback in the head, yeah, you're gonna get the flag throwing, but it's just an accident. That was not an accident. The whole team never gave up and continued to fight. Kudos to the Philadelphia Eagles. You still are NFC East champs. Nobody can take that away from you. With all the injuries, all the adversity, you guys fought and fought and fought. And six weeks ago, Seven weeks ago, names like Boston Scott, 
Greg Ward Jr., Josh Perkins. Nobody knew who they were. Nobody cared about you. Now people know who you are and they care about you. And these three people right here got a spot on the Philadelphia Eagles roster next year. With all that being said, let's talk about some offseason stuff already. Malcolm Jenkins said today that if he does not get a new contract, he will not be back for the Philadelphia Eagles next year, which will be his last year of his deal. I'm not trying to bring a lot of these 30-plus-year-olds back this year, but if there's one guy I would, it's Malcolm Jenkins. I would try to restructure his deal to get him for one or two more years, maybe a third-year team option, something along them lines. He's played every single snap for the defense, 100% of the snaps, and he plays everywhere in Jim Schwartz's scheme. He plays the linebacker position in the box. He rushes the passer. He plays the safety. He plays the corner slot. He plays every single position. He D's tight ends. He D's receivers. He D runner backs. He does a lot for the Philadelphia Eagles, and health has never been a problem. So he's the one guy over 30 that I would automatically just bring back, Malcolm Jenkins. But I'm going to run off this list of guys who are going to be free agents. Now, I'm not going to tell you in this video who I would take and not, but we got a long list of free agents. I'm just going to run off them. There's some more, but I'm only going to talk about the guys that either play this year or have a kind of role in our team. Let's talk about it. We got Nigel Bradham, Ronnie McLeod, Ronald Darby, Jalen Mills, Jason Peters, Nelson Aguilar, Timmy Jurgen, Hassan Ridgeway, Jordan Howard, Kamu Gruger Hill, Cameron Johnson, Haloti Pai Vitae. These are the main guys who are all free agents that we got to think about. With that being said, thank you for watching. It's just Monday. It's Monday. You know how Mondays are after an Eagles loss, let alone a playoff loss, let alone a dirty hit that took out our franchise quarterback. Could have been really bad. It could have been really bad. With all that being said, thank you for watching. If you like this content, smash the like button. It helps this channel grow and leave me a comment. Let me know how you feel after waking up one day about that hit. Let me know how you feel about the loss. And let me know on that first list of free agents, anybody that jumps out to you to keep or to get rid of. Because I know one of them stands out, Nelson Aguilar. But we're going to talk about some off-season videos. We got the draft coming, some draft rumors, draft predictions. Um, we got 10 picks, 10 picks in the draft. Um, pick number 21, it's cool. We can either move up or trade down. So I, I like it, I like it. Um, at the end of the day, we got a lot to talk about. Let me know what you think and don't forget to leave a comment. We out.